So much of Chinese art is inspired by nature. And speaking of nature, let's see what we can discover in nature. My eyes are adjusting to the sunlight. Yeah, yeah, mine too. It's... it's a golden pheasant. Whoa! And is it ever gold or what? Oh, it sure is. <laughs> and gold is in its name. That's one golden pheasant. Scientific name, Chrysophilus pictus. Wow, even in the shade, the colors are so bright and beautiful. The gold, the blue, the red, the green. Oh, and that pattern, check out that pattern. Oh, I love that beautiful green upper back. And the rest of the back is golden yellow. A beautiful red body, that golden crown, a chestnut tail, and look at that blue. There are so many colors in this bird. And check out that orange cape. It's beautiful. Oh, ho, ho. Hey, why'd he do that? Do what? <laughs> Run out into the sun, grab some berries, then hurry back to the shade. Forgot to put on his sunscreen? <laughs> well, he obviously doesn't want to stay in the sun too long. Hey, guys. I think I know why. Sunlight has beams of ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light can bleach or fade color. Hmm. So, he leaves the shade, go gets his berries, and then rushes back to the shade. Huh, so for this bird to take such good care of his color, that means color must be very important for golden pheasants. But why? I think the answer might have just arrived. Look, the hen is kind of plain. Well, yeah, they have to be brown and tan, like the ground and leaves, so they stay hidden when they're sitting on the nest. That means they need to protect their color, because that kind of color is attractive. The hens love it. Yes, so the golden pheasant colors are for attracting mates. The more colorful, the more attractive. The most colorful males father the most chicks. Color can be a really important thing in the creature world. <gasps> Giant pandas! That is just about the cutest animal I have ever seen! <laughs> Looks like he's about three or four months old. He was just the size of a banana when he was born. And she'll take care of him until he's about two years old. Hi, little guy. <laughs> oh, I just want to hug you. He reminds me of my little stuffed toy. <gasps> That's it. I'll call him Stuffo in honor of your panda toy. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffo's a little tuffo. Well, it's a good start to our survey. One mother and baby panda in the northeast sector of the forest. <gasps> I've got to start on a panda power suit, guys. Oh, but wait, what is the panda's creature power anyway? No. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, the power of cute. Look, Mom's heading off. Let's follow them and try to see a panda power in action. This is it, Aviva. You're about to see panda power in action. Oh, yeah, the panda's thumb. Watch how the panda handles the stalk. And look closely at the panda's paw. Ooh, ah! hmm. Well, at least now I look a little like a panda. Oh, Ooh, make that a lot like a panda. 
See? Count the fingers on her paw. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six? That's right, six. That thumb that lets the panda hold on to and handle the bamboo stalk so well actually isn't a thumb at all. It's actually a wrist bone. And in pandas, it's gotten longer and evolved into a special thumb, a panda's thumb, which makes them masters at handling bamboo. Wow, that is super cool. I'm putting that right in the suit. Five fingers plus a special panda's thumb. Oh, can I test it? Please, can I test it? I guess so. You've already got the black eyes, so why not? Activate panda power! <laughs> yes! Panda power! Oh, I feel so big <laughs> and strong. Oh, I have the awesome panda stump. <laughs> Uh, uh, but I also feel kind of sleepy. And really hungry. Oh, I need to find something to eat. Well, they do eat a lot. Up to 40 kilograms of bamboo a day. That is a lot. 